right, welcome to episode two, and we're going to just review the project we worked in on episode one. All this program does is draw a rectangle on the screen with a black background, and I think that's okay, but I think processing is a lot more fun when you put a lot of crazy colors everywhere, so we're going to do that. Um, first off, I'm going to disable the background, um, and I can do that by just deleting the line. And so we get a nice trail effect, and that's gonna become really pretty uh, in a second when we have a lot more colors. So by default, you can see we're drawing with a white fill color here, and we have a black outline by default. Um, that's because we've never told processing what colors we wanna do, and smartly they picked those two colors because it's pretty easy to see what's going on. So if we come back to our code here, we can call another function called fill, and it takes three arguments, which are the red, green, and blue values that we're gonna make our color out of. So if you've never done colors on computers, it's a little bit like mixing paint, where you add some primary colors, except instead of red, yellow, and blue, we use red, green, and blue, and they combine in ways that are maybe a little less predictable than you would expect for paint. But uh, bear with me here. So we need to give it three arguments, the red, green, and blue, like I said, and the values go between zero and 255. So zero is no amount of that color, and 255 is the maximum amount of that color. So we can do 255 red, zero green, and zero blue. And if you guessed right, it's red. But that's still not that interesting, and I personally don't like this outline trailing after the square, so let's get rid of that as well. We can call a function called no stroke, and you'll notice the S is capital here on stroke. Whenever you have two words together in a function name, the second word's first letter is going to be capitalized. Uh, they call it camel case sometimes. So if we run this again, you'll see now we don't have any outlines, and we can kind of paint almost on the screen. Um, that's still not that interesting. I mean, you know, I guess you could make a game out of it, filling the whole screen up with red. But I think what would be much more interesting is if we bring some randomness into here. So, there's another function we can call, called random, which returns a random number in a range that we give it. So instead of telling it every frame to draw with a 255 red, we could say draw with random 255 red. And what that means, what this term here of random 255 means is give me a random number between zero and whatever I put in, in this case 255. So every frame, it's gonna go between, somewhere between black and very red, with some sort of dark reds in the middle. And you notice if I don't move the mouse at all, it, you can see it blinking because it's, it's drawing over itself every frame. But if I move, I get this really cool snake effect, leaving lots of trails on the screen. So we can do that, actually the same for um, another one of these terms and get a lot more different colors in here. Maybe um, we'll just set the green to be all the way bright but we'll do the blue also random and independently random from the red value. And we start getting all these really cool neon kind of colors here. Um, maybe I'm gonna do that the other way around, random on the green and just peg the blue. So we always have kind of a bluish tint and now we'll get lots of bluey purples. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, another thing is maybe this rectangle isn't the best shape to draw with. So instead of calling rect here with our positions and our size, we could call ellipse. And surprisingly, it takes the same set of uh, arguments, which is where to draw it and how big to draw it. So if we run this, now we have an ellipse. And I think that looks a lot nicer with the rounded edges. We don't leave any harsh trails behind. So that's good and all, but maybe I don't wanna have to move the mouse. Maybe I wanna make animations that happen automatically. So we're gonna need to store some information of where our ellipse should be drawn on the screen and for that, we're gonna use a variable. So a variable is just a way to store information. And there's a couple of different kinds of variables that you'll see across all languages. Um, in the case of processing, there's integers and floats, sometimes called ints and floats. Those are just two different ways to store numbers. Um, there's booleans, which just store a true and a false value. Uh, there's strings and characters, which are ways of storing text. And then there's a class of variables called objects, which we'll get into a lot later, but they're sort of amalgamations of other sets of variables that you can define yourself. For now, we just need to define one float variable. And we do that by saying float, to tell it we need a floating point number here, just a, a number to store with a decimal place. And then we have to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this variable x, that's pretty boring, but float x. And now in the rest of our program below this, 
we'll be able to use this variable x by name. So instead of drawing the ellipse at the mouse cursor, I'm gonna say draw it at x points across and I don't know, 300 down. So if I run this, there's our circle, but it's not moving, right? Now we could set x equal to a number, uh, maybe in our setup routine, since that only happens once, we'll initialize the value, we can say x equals, I don't know, 400. And now we'll get it somewhere closer to the middle of the screen. Actually, that might be exactly the middle of the screen. But still, it's not moving. We've only set it to an, a value one time. What we need to do is update the value of x every frame. So we could do that maybe by saying, in here, in our draw loop, every frame, make x equal to what x was plus one, right? So we're saying x is now equal to the old value of x plus one. So every frame, it's gonna be one higher. And if we run this, you can see our ellipsis slowly moving across the canvas. So that was cool, but I think we could make it go a lot faster. So maybe if we add plus five every frame, and you're beginning to see they're spreading out a little bit more like when we were moving our mouse quickly because it can only hit so many circles before it manages to go off screen. Maybe we could go even faster, plus 30 every frame. And now it's just, just off screen immediately. Um, and that is kind of a problem, right? We want our circle maybe to loop back around. We don't want it to just do it once. So we can do what's called an if statement. We can check if something has met a certain condition and if so, run some other code. So every time we update its position, we plus 30 to it, we could also check if x is greater than some number, bring it back to zero so it loops back around. And it just so happens that there's a variable built for us called width, which contains the current width of the screen, the same one that we set up here in size. Um, it's better, you know, I could type if x is greater than 800 and since that matches up, with the number up there, it would work. But if we ever changed the size of the screen, we'd have to come back and modify our code. So it's better to just use this variable width that will automatically be whatever the size of the screen is. So if x is greater than the width of the screen, just make x back equal to zero all the way on the left side. So now when we run this, we have a little loop. As soon as it goes off the right side, the next frame will appear on the left side and it just goes over and over and over again. And now that we have that, we could try copy pasting our line that draws the ellipse and maybe do it multiple times. So if I just ran this now, it would draw three identical ellipses on top of each other every frame. But if I take the Y value here, the height of the ellipse, and I say, say I don't know, 400 and 500 for the heights, now we have a little trio of them orbiting across the screen. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.